Hi, everybody. My name is Kiara. I'm the training manager. Um, we will get started here in about one or two minutes. We're um, setting up the training presentations. Um, a lot of you already have dropped in the chat where you're located. Um, so feel free to share. Lots of people in the DFW Metroplex. So that's nice. And shared mine, we're located in Plano, Texas. So we will definitely have an in-person training in Dallas. Um, we'll get started here in two minutes. Hi, guys. Thank you, Kiara. So we are going to start. And well, as you know, we have this virtual training. Today we have uh, the third training. And we are going to talk about a basic setup, EVO integration. Oh, sorry. And uh, then we are going to go to sales and renewal pipeline. And what we are going to do is first, um, we are going to watch this video that it's about our CEO of insurance. First of all, I want to welcome you to Insured Mind Family. Thanks for making this wonderful decision of incorporating Insured Mind to your business. It means a lot because now, every day that what we do, we work with you together to build a customer journey towards your agency growth. We start focusing from lead capture to lead nurture to sales funnel to onboarding, to retention. All of these elements of customer journey will be hyper-focused to help you understand your customer better so you can focus on where the opportunities of cross-sell and upsell is. You can understand your business data way better. You are able to engage with your customer, build that customer experience. And in all of these, we will be working with you hand in hand. Now we all work together for one common goal, which is to help your agency succeed. We are all on this together. With that, I welcome you to Insured Mind Family. Thanks for joining. Insured Mind people. So we have Roshan Jaiswal, that is the CEO and co-founder. We have Sneha. Then Tucker, that is the director of sales. Then we have Shubham Jaiswal, Paula, that is part of a customer success and solution manager, Kiara Harvey, that she is our training manager. Then we have Victoria Smith. That Victoria Smith is going to help you also with all your questions. So you can save your email. Then we have Sam. Uh, Shibam, that it's part of the building team, Rohan and Shubham Mira. Rohan and Shubham Mira, they are going to help you with any support questions that you have in your platform. You're going to be able to send a chat and they are going to answer you. And then we have Montserrat, that it's myself. So I'm going to be your customer success manager. I'm going to work with Victoria. Victoria and I are going to manage your account and work together to help you to understand the platform, the integration and build your process. Um, I do want to note that a popular question that's been asked, this is free for all of you. TWFG has purchased um, your insured mine account for you. Um, so although on here you see Shivam and billing, you guys do not have to pay insured mine anything. Um, you get access to all of our features, including e-signature, document manager, sales pipeline, renewal process, all of that. Um, and it all talks back with uh, your Evo portal for your policy management. So we'll talk more about the difference between Evo and um, insured mine, but I do want to note that you guys, it's free for you all. Thank you, Kiara. Well, so the goal for today is going to be the setup, complete the basic setup for ensure my accounts, the EVO integration, the navigation, and then we're going to go to sales pipeline, pipeline setup, uh, pipeline automations, deal card, tax, man 
that's management, the break. And then uh, we are going to review the reports, dashboard, leaderboard goals. Again, the reports. So in instrument, we have different reports that you can create. And in January 23, we're going to jump into marketing automation, email campaign, list and templates, and is signature. Why would you buy like this the training? Because sales pipeline or pipeline module, it's the biggest module and uh, it takes a little bit of time to understand how it works and to build your process. So these, um, the sales pipeline and our engagement tab are the most popular features of Insured Mind. Like Monserrat said, there's a lot of um, bells and whistles with us. Uh, so we chunk the training so you guys aren't sitting here for 10 hours. Um, so today uh, I saw a few questions about how long is this training? Um, we're targeted or slated for two and a half hours. We've blocked out three hours just to provide some wiggle room. You will have a break in between. The break will be 15 minutes. So you can refresh your coffee, go to the bathroom, all of those things. Um, we will have more training sessions uh, at the beginning of next year. So in January, we plan to have one in person in Dallas. Um, but the more comfortable you get, the more you hear the words, you see the platform, you understand uh, the benefits of a CRM, the faster you can start growing your business with InsureFind. So um, thanks all 91 of you <laughs> for joining today. All right. The resources that we have provided for all of you to jumpstart your process. Um, so we have an online certification course uh, that is built specifically for TWFG. Um, on this certification course, it'll go over a lot of the content that we're going to discuss today in a little bit more detail and at your own pace. So it's self-paced. Um, and then also we have our TWFG agency training guide. Um, in the chat, Monserrat will drop the links to both of those resources. In the manual, you will see the actual pictures of the screens in Evo and where the data from Evo will transfer into Insured Mind. Um, and uh, the schedule in there, that's for the in-person training that we will have. Um, it also includes some QR codes uh, that will link you to like the certification course to schedule one-on-one -on -one training. Um, all of you get access to one-on-one -on -one training to learn the system. But before you get to one-on-one -on -one training, you have to complete your certification course. The certification course only takes about 30 to 45 minutes to complete. Again, it's self-paced, so it's up to you how long it takes. And um, I encourage completing the certification course in one screen and then on the other, go to Insured Mind and just fumble around in the system. Um, while we are going over um, training today, if you guys have any questions, just drop them in the chat. I'll pause throughout each section um, to cover or answer any questions. Um, and I think that's it on the call with us today. So you have uh, myself and Monserrat, um, and then we have uh, some people from the tech team who will uh, go over the Evo integration and show you how data is transferred and how long it takes for that transfer. Um, but before we do that, we're going to jump into how do you get access to the platform? Um, rules of engagement, where it's pretty short today, so this isn't as important, but just keep a growth mindset. Again, there's a lot of bells and whistles. It's going to feel like you're drinking from a fire hose at time. Um, so just chunk it. That's why we're just doing sales pipeline. And we'll go over the benefits of using sales pipeline with reports. And then next time we meet, we'll go over marketing. Drop your questions in the chat. <laughs> okay, we'll keep them going. All right, how to sign in. Um, so inside of Evo, um, there is an Insured Mind button that you can click that will open Insured Mind. Um, Insured Mind is a website, so um, it's not an app you have to download on your computer or anything like that. You just click that button and it's going to take you to this website here, twfg.insuredmind.com slash agent. Your username when you sign in is your TWFG email. 
And then your password, if you guys want access, you can drop in the chat. Mumsaret will email you because we need to keep a list of all who have requested access. Um, drop your email in the chat and Mumsaret will send you a password reset link. Um, so those are the two ways to access the platform. Um, I see the emails already getting dropped in. Perfect. So by the end of today, all of you in your inbox will have that password reset. Um, again, you can also click in Evo, that launch button, and it'll take you to the screen. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now. All right, so once you go to that twfg.insuredmind.com website, this is the screen you're going to see. You're gonna sign in using your TWFG email and then um, you'll get your password reset from Montserrat and you'll sign in. So I'm actually gonna sign in as, all right, so once you sign in, um, the very first screen you're going to see the first few times when you sign in is this get started page. The get started page is the process of setting up your profile and your account. It's connecting your email and um, just following the steps to um, get started with Insured Mind. If you sign in and you do not see this get started screen, if you click your profile picture in the far right, and then select get started, it'll bring you right back to this screen here. Um, the goal of this screen is to have green check marks all the way down. Okay, so step one is to complete your profile. You'll upload your picture, type in your full name, um, address, the phone number. This phone number is going to be your agency phone number, not your personal phone number. So your business phone. You'll do save and continue. Then the next step is to connect your work email. So you'll, so instead of saying this one's already connected, you'll, it's going to say connect. You'll click there. It's going to ask you to select your email provider, and then you'll just follow the steps to sign in. Once you have successfully connected, you're going to see this green connected stamp on this uh, step of the get started screen. And you're just going to continue that process all the way down. So you'll do save and continue. If at any point you need help or you need more clarity on the step that you are in, on the far right, you're going to see a video and a knowledge base article on how to complete that exact step that you're viewing. So you can read it or you can watch how to complete it. Okay. Throughout the system, uh, you have access to the support chat. Um, like Monserrat said, you're chatting real people. So it's Shubham, Rohan, um, they're all there. You can ask them any question that you have. We also have this help tab. The help tab gives you access to all of the knowledge base articles associated with the module that you are in. So every time you switch modules, so if I go to pipeline manager and I click this help tab, the articles will switch to that specific module. So throughout the entire platform, there's places to get help on how to set up or complete whatever you're trying to do. After a few sign-ins, you're no longer going to see that get started page. You're going to start seeing this agency dashboard. On this agency dashboard, it is all of the data that is pulled directly from Evo. So this is your AMS data. Okay, So in here, it'll show you how many total accounts you are managing, how much money in premium, how many policies. This is a summary of your entire book of business. And all this data is pulled directly from Evo. The dashboards are gonna be broken up into four different categories. You have the agency dashboard, which is your Evo data. You have the sales dashboard. The sales dashboard is your new business data that you are collecting or populating in from your pipeline manager. And pipeline manager is your sales process. So managing how many leads are in your prospect stage and how many leads are in your quote sent stage and how many customers do you have in your issue policy stage. So it's a way to kind of manage um, each portion of your sales process. 
um, just by completing deal cards and we'll look at what deal cards are, but just by working on the pipeline, all of this data will start pre-populating. So you don't have to do anything, okay? All you have to do is complete deal cards, mark them won and lost, and we'll go over that today. Um, so agency dashboard is Evo, your AMS data. Sales dashboard is insured mine data. It's your new business, your sales, your renewals, all of that. You have your activity dashboard. Activity dashboard will show you what tasks you need to complete for the day. Um, you can create a personal to-do list. And then any activities that you have completed will populate here. Um, the activity dashboard, a lot of CSRs or a lot of account managers will use the activity dashboard. And a lot of producers will use the sales dashboard. If you're both, you're all in one, um, you'll toggle back and forth. And then you have your marketing dashboard. We'll go over more of the marketing dashboard in January, but the marketing dashboard will show you how many campaigns you have sent out. Um, how many cross-sell campaigns are you going to send out next week? So it'll show you a summary of the communication paths that you have set and when they're going to be sent out. Any questions on dashboard? Looking at the chat, any questions on dashboard or the get started page? So every agent at TWFG, whether they're a customer service rep, whether it's a CSR, they all have access to insured mine. So they have their own logins um, and it's already been linked to your account. Um, I'll show you how to add additional users if you need to. Um, but yes, everyone gets access to it. Um, Cricket, if you use your personal number, yes, that's up to you. So I always suggest using your business phone, but if you have customers that sometimes will use your personal phone, then you can use that as well. Um, TWFG, well, we'll go over phone integration and everything like that, but I do want to go over the Evo integration first. So we'll go in depth on the phone connection. Um, Muhammad, I'll briefly go over the um, automations. I can definitely show you that. Okay, so just to review, the first step to get started with Insured Mind, you're first going to complete your certification course. Okay, after you complete the certification course, you'll sign into Insured Mind and you're going to complete your Get Started page. On that Get Started page, it's your account setup. So those are the things you need to do first before anything. Okay, Evo integration. Um, so we'll go over the exact uh, syncing of data and they'll show you how it transfers. Uh, but this is a summary of the integration that we have. So it's an immediate sync with Insured Mind to Evo. Okay, when we talk about syncing to Evo, there's different ways it can communicate. So you have Evo sending information into Insured Mind, and then you have Insured Mind sending information into Evo. When you guys sign in, um, hopefully by Wednesday or Thursday, all of the data that is inside of Evo should be synced with Insured Mind already. So when you sign in on those days, you're going to see your current customers that you have inside of Evo. When we're talking about Evo sending information into Insured Mind, what you will see is all of your contacts and all of the policies attached to those contacts. Okay. And then from Insured Mind into Evo, um, all activities that you were doing with your customer will document inside of Evo under the diary section. So if you add a note inside of Insured Mind, it'll transfer into Evo under the diary. Same thing for task, emails, files. Um, if you are using Insured Mind for the phone system, so if you have Twilio, Ring Central, um, all of the calls will be documented in. Um, all the text messages that you're sending will be documented under the diary section in Evo. 
Um, so on the call, we have uh, three people from our tech team. I'm going to pass it over to Jay. Jay will go over and show you guys how data will go back and forth. Thank you, Kira. Hello, everyone. So uh, Sachin, please go ahead and share your screen and we can start to explain the things. Hope like everyone can see the screen of Sachin's. No. Yeah, uh, please go ahead, Sachin. Sure. So, so first of all, we have two options of syncing. One is automatic and other is manual. So mainly people keep it automatic. So we'll keep it manual for now. To see what's going on. So we here we have default settings. If we don't want to change some things like producer and CSR, producer is mandatory for everything like uh, insured and policies. So we'll select anyone. Okay. So save this yeah. one. You can find yeah, this so, in profile setting. Yeah. yeah, please hold it here, uh, Sachin. So the reason why we have the default contact sync fields is, so with InsureMind, we are providing both the options. Like you can go ahead and create the contact in InsureMind. It has to be synced with your respective Evo AMS immediately without any human interruption. Or if you want to do it on a manual basis, like you will go ahead and manually select the data fields, something like the producers, CSRs and others, that also you can enable it. So we have multiple ways of sync. So one will be the account and then within account, you can have the contact level sync and also the policies you can sync it from InsureMind to Evo and the activities also. So accounts are nothing but the clients in Evo. So you can go ahead and create the account in InsureMind and it can immediately sync with your Evo when you have auto enabled. The same case goes with policy. When you're creating a policy in InsureMind, it can go ahead and sync with your Evo based on the setting. The activities are nothing but the communication. So in Evo, we can call it as diary. Let's say I'm going to make a call for my client. So I can record that as a call diary. Similarly, if I'm going to create a note activity in InsureMind, that means you're creating a diary note for your respective customers in Evo. This is something like a documentation that can flow from InsureMind to Evo. And then the contact sync policy sync will also go in that same way. I hope like, uh, so the first part is clear. So if anyone has questions, I'm ready to answer. So before we start with the next part. So um, I'll explain a little bit the benefit of having manual sync turned on. Um, so some agents want to manage their prospects inside of insured mine. And they only want to sync contacts to Evo when the customer says yes. So um, a customer calls you, they say, I'm interested in a policy. You collect all the quote information while you're on the call with that customer and you send them the quote. Um, you keep them inside of Insured Mine. Insured Mine will still document all the text messages, all the email communication, all the files that you have sent. It'll still store it all. And then the customer says, yes, I'm interested in a policy. You then will click sync. And once that is synced, all data that you have collected for that customer will then transfer into Evo. So it keeps Evo clean of all prospects. And the only thing that will show in Evo um, moving forward will be just active clients or inactive clients that have canceled policies. So that's one way that some agents will set up the account. Um, another way is if you want prospects to be inside of Evo, um, you'll turn on auto sync. So every time you create a contact inside of Insured Mine, it also creates that contact profile inside of Evo. So that would be the difference of turning on auto sync versus manual sync. And then what Jay was just showing you guys is syncing contacts. So when you are creating a contact, a contact is a customer profile inside of Evo, and um, it just transfers everything back and forth. That's all it's doing. And I see a few questions. Sarah, so he'll show you um, what fields inside of Evo it's going to sync to. Um, Apendra. Um, policies. So 
When the carrier downloads the policy into Evo, InsuredMind will automatically update with that policy information. Um, you can, if there's, let's say a carrier does not download a policy, you can manually add a policy inside of InsuredMind and it'll show up in Evo. But most of the time, the carrier will download into Evo and you don't have to do anything. Um, Sarah, you're going to turn on the sync options in the um, settings page, which I will go over. Um, but we wanted to show you guys the transfer of data first. Um, Mohammed, uh, Monserrat will send you your uh, password reset. Um, Stephanie. Oh, okay. Jay just answered your question, Stephanie. So regarding the policy carrier download, so it just let me put this question. Uh, Damon, oh, auto. No, no, no. Yeah, please go ahead, Kira. Uh, auto sync. So it happens immediately. So if you create a contact inside of insured mine, um, when you go into Evo about a minute later, it'll be there. Uh, Denise, as soon as you, um, buy and Jay, you'll have to confirm by the end of the week, for sure. Um, all of your contacts that you have inside of Evo, prospects included, will already be inside of Insured Mind. So you don't have to move any contact anywhere. Uh, Justin Amos is synced backwards. Okay, so Justin, when you go through setup, um, you'll meet with your customer success manager and they can help you flip those roles uh, for data. Um, inactive clients, yes, inactive clients will be pulled in. So for now, uh, we agreed to pull only the active insured. So we are okay. in top with the uh, Evo team, uh, the technical team. So uh, do we need to pull the data or not? If that is confirmed, so we will be pulling those. At this current pace, we have the active insureds available with insured. Right? Okay. So only active? Yep. At this point. Right. Yes. At this point, only active clients will be pulled in their work with Evo to see about prospects. Um. You and anyone with the TWFG email can sign into insured by. So if their agency setup is done, so because like, so last day only we have got the approval from Evo team for doing the data sync. So it needs some setup from the backend side. So as soon as it is ready, the respective people will be notified through emails, then they can start to use it. But ideally they are Evo login credentials which means the email and insured mine login email will also be same they can use the same cases as soon as the setup is over um ibrahim sorry if i'm saying that wrong here's the twfg certification course just dropped it in the chat okay go ahead jay or sachin i don't know who's Yeah, uh, please go ahead, Sachin, regarding the contacts. So now Sachin will be showing you guys like so how he, we will be creating the account and contacts and insured mine and how it will be applicable in Evo portal. So he will show you both cases and then we can get C. Yeah, guys, so we'll go through contacts. So click here. So we have two options, commercial and personal. We can like select, like fill everything which we want. So this this name should be unique, okay, for every agency. So we can't have same similar names. So it's my name and the date today's. So for explaining it better, so he is using some uh, names with the date. So it's totally up to the agents who can choose the names. It should be unique. 
yeah it should be unique in terms of their name email and address so that is the kind of validation that happens from evo in which means like you cannot create the same client with the same details again and again so you should be going with the unique parameters as per evo Taking this data, we can fill these data. We have some some mapping here and there. So, like whichever field we have in Evo can be filled here. So it it will seek both way. Let's say this one. So she so brought in. I can fill this one. We'll get it there. So save this one. So it's for my name. It comes down, but today I think I have sorted it somewhere. So I'll search it. I just created this is manual, so it is not synced. You'll see an icon to sync it to your Evo. So here you, you have those default fields which you have selected earlier in the settings. So for with the manual, you have an option of changing these things, which you don't have in automatic or in automatic, you have default fields, create, you know, set, set it. So you can change it here. So let's say I'll use this one. So you can use, you can select only one. You can create, uh, add one or more, but, but a default one will be the first one, okay. So I'll select this. In CSR, we only have one option. So I'll sync this one. Yep. After syncing, we have this option of opening Evo. So we have linked this to Evo. So if I click here, it will take me to Evo. This is a keyword portal, so it takes time. As we have seen, like Sachin was creating an account in InsureMind, and that was not immediately got synced. The reason is that we have enabled the manual sync option. But if we are enabling the auto sync option under that agent's profile settings, as soon as the contact or the account got created in InsureMind, it will be synced with Evo. But it will be taking that default values, which means that producer and CSR that was set up over there, it will take that users and then it will be using it. That's the main purpose of having the default fields. If it is manual, you will have an option to change that one before doing that sync at any time. So this is the account which we created just now in insured mine. This is having the same producer and Stephanie. These are both synced. So let's say you want to add one more account. So we have two things, account and contact. Okay, so can you explain this one better? I think you will explain it better. The, rela the relation between account and contact, and how it works in Evo. Yes, Sachin. So regarding this accounts, accounts are nothing but the inshoots, which means the clients in Evo. The contacts are basically the additional contacts. So that uh, account will always be the top level entity in InsureMind and same case goes with Evo, but the contacts will be the secondary parameters that we will be using it for the secondary cases, which means I can have one account for that one account. I can go ahead and have more than 10 contacts also. Kind of like family relation, we can say, let's say if there is a company, company will have its top level people who will be the account. But under that, you will have multiple employees. Those are nothing but the contacts. Exactly like in Evo, we have this option. Yeah, right? exactly. Yes. So if I add one more here. Let's see. Add 
this one and there's an option of syncing it. Sync this one with a refresh here. This one is synced. So you can see the secondary contact has been added here. So you can have multiple contacts under, under an account, which is insured. This is your insured search in 13 plan. So this is your account, which is the same, but you can add multiple contacts in it. So it, this one is primary contact, which is basically the account. So this is linked to the account. So after that, you can add multiple accounts, uh, multiple contacts, which will be Added as an in short contact in Evo. There are many questions. So let's go back to the questions and then we can continue searching. So sure. the first question that I can see is from Katrina. I have a question when do we have to use Evo and when do we have to use insurance? It's totally up to the agent. So, but the best cases will be so you have the capability to add the contacts, accounts, policies, activities, everything from insurement. But if you are comfortable with this, you, you can go ahead and add it in insurement. But insurement is just added as an integration for Evo. That means like it has certain limitations for the fields. So if you want to use the full pledge, so would suggest you can go ahead and add it in Evo. But if you are comfortable with the limited fields which are available through integration, you can go ahead and add that one from insurance portal. But both cases, it will sync. So especially on the policies case, so policy update, we are not allowing from insurance to Evo. That's a kind of like limitation we have. So if you have any policy related data updates other than insert, you can go ahead and do it in Evo. But other things you can do it from insurance itself. Yeah, so I'll add to that. So. Um... Evo is your policy management system. So it's your AMS. The AMS is what communicates back with each one of the carriers. So anytime you have a policy management issue, so like you need to make an endorsement to a policy, you would go to the carrier and then your AMS, which is Evo, would update with that information. Evo is your, um, I forgot the word that they use, but Evo is like your protector, right? So it prevent, it's a, document or it's a tracker of all the interactions that has happened. So it's your protection, but it doesn't help you build relationships with your customers. It doesn't help you manage your sales process or your renewals. Um, you have created your own systems or processes in order to do that um, using Evo. So what insured mine is insured mine is a customer relationship management system. So it picks up where kind of Evo drops or any AMS drops the ball. Uh, the communication that is required back and forth with the customer just to get to the point of sales. Um, the management of renewals. So InsuredMind will help you communicate with your customers. Um, you can do that through automations. So a lot of deals, for example, are lost during the quote sent stage. Once you send the quote out to the customer, you have to remember to follow up with that customer. And Shared Mind can do that follow up for you. So we have automations that you can create. We do give you some templates, but you can create your own sequence. So maybe you want to follow up the customer for the next two weeks, every three days. The system will send it for you. And it's as if it's coming directly from your email because you're connecting your email to insured mine. And all of those emails that it's sending out will document inside of Evo that you called this customer on this particular day. You sent an email five days later. Um, the customer sent you this file on the third day. All of that will document inside of Evo under that contact. 
So insured mine is customer relationship management. Evo is policy management. So uh, Katrina, your question is, when do you use insured mine? When do you use Evo? You'll create your own process. So in an ideal world, um, let's say you have your producers, you want all of your producers to enter their leads and prospects inside of insured mine. And they're going to stay in insured mine until the customer says yes. When the customer says yes, you mark the deal card. A deal card is a business deal you're working. You'll mark that deal card one. And that's all you do because the policy will download inside of Evo and all the email chains, all the files, all the text message you've sent to them during the sales process will document inside of Evo. So the only reason to go back into Evo would be if you need to, um, I don't know, like make an edit to the expiration date of a policy or you're manually plugging in a policy. Um, so that would be the difference. I hope that answers your question. If you have more, please drop it. Um, Sarah, did that answer your question as well? When you enter someone in insured mind versus Evo? Okay, perfect. Scanning and uploading documents. You can upload a file inside of Insured Mine and it'll attach inside of Evo. So you can drag and drop into Insured Mine and it'll transfer. Justin, how do you fix bugs? Um, you can message chat support and say, I feel like there's a bug and they can help you. You can meet with Mom Zaret, who's your customer success manager. You can meet with Victoria. Um, you'll have to explain where you think the bug is first in details and then we have to find it they basically have to go behind the scenes with the code and find where the bug is. Um, but we first need to make sure it is a bug rather than um, like just a user um, issue or like- a, yeah. It could be a limitation also sometimes. Right, yeah. Um, a lot of you guys are saying you don't see your CSRs. Um, once we finish this integrations section, I'll show you how to add users in your account. Exactly. Yeah. So we are still in the phase of like transferring all of your data and completing that integration for your respective branch. Once it is done, so you will have all of these data points populated according to your branch you are associated with for now. So for few people, it will work. Few people, it won't. That's where like the things are aligning. So we will have to just wait until this is completed. So we just got an approval from Evo time or Evo team recently. So we are currently working on it. As soon as it is completed, we will send you the notification regard. Um, Earl, agency build policies, all policies will be synced into insured mine. When we look at the renewal pipeline, um, Jay, if you can confirm this, the renewal deal cards will say whether they're direct bill or agency bill. Yes, yeah, so we are already handling this billing methods for okay. the deal card, so it should be showing up in insured mine. Okay. Um, Darren, when a new policy is sold, is a new policy created in Evo? as required by Evo. Yes, Darren, so when the policy downloads from the carrier, it's already in Evo. If the policy does not download, you can create, um, Jay, can you create a policy in here and show it in Evo? Yes, uh, uh, Sachin, please go ahead and create a policy for this respective client and show that in real time. So if it does not download, you can, inside of Insured Mine, create a policy. Most of the time you don't have to though, because the carrier will download it for you. Um, Do you have yeah. Do you have um, carriers? These are coming from Evo. So for your branches, if you, you guys will have these things. So we will pull these things, the carriers list. So I can use any one of them. So one important thing at this point in terms of category and carrier is it's possible uh, the agents will create the categories and carriers and insured mine. So if you are creating a policy for those which are created in just in insured mine and not available with Evo, so that will not get synced. You will have to be selecting the categories and carriers which are existing Evo because then only it can have the capability of syncing. So that will be the important point that I would like to make it here. 
and the policy number should be unique, like the name of the insured. So, right. This is again the validation a point of view in Evo. So, if you are creating the same policy number again and again, so it will not allow us to insert that through the integration APIs. So the thing is that we will have to maintain the uniqueness while creating these policies. You'll get an error message that it is already there. So you can change the name or the address or the email. So we have add one policy. This is not synced yet. So I'll just open this one. So here we have yeah the questions we, we had right I think this is the question for the agency build or something yeah we have option of we have two options agency build and direct build and the build type we have three options for this one so I'll select so all party. these yeah right so all these are coming from Evo again and here we are showing this option to make it like working exactly like evo so whichever fields are mandatory in evo which are not related to insurement to the max so we are showing those fields for the agents so they can select on these fields according to their need and then they can sync it yeah so next yeah this is synced so let's see i open this one Yeah, so if you see, we have a policy added here. So if I go here, we'll have that policy. The line was agriculture auto, and the company was something TIG. This is the detail. So I'm seeing a lot of questions about you guys are told to set up the policy shell before it downloads. Um, if we set up a policy name. You guys are referring to policies that do not automatically download from the carrier. So the concern is if you don't set up the shell, then it's just going to dump the policy into, um, it'll create another contact. Is that the concern? Or it won't dump it into the right contact? Uh, now we must set up the shell at the point of sale. So when it downloads, it matches up the shell at the point of sale. Uh, maybe I'm confused on why it wouldn't align. Here we do have to show ready the download. Whenever the policy yeah. download happens, like it usually happens on top of certain clients, which means insurance insures in Evo that will automatically bring the data into insurance as well. Got it. Got it. Okay. So I see all of you are saying the same thing. So it goes to like the branch instead of assigned to the branch. Yeah. So I agree with you all then just go to Evo and create your policy, create that shell. So again, Evo will still be your policy management. Insured Mind helps you manage your sales process, so your prospects. Um, and then, you know, once the customer says yes, what happens next with them? So you might send them out a document that says, you know, what what to do if they have a claim or welcome to our agency, kind of the welcome kit. So Insured Mind can take over that process. But if you guys need to go into, if the main office is requiring you guys to do something, I would just go into Evo and create that shell. Because it says, you guys are saying it just downloads to the branch instead of where it needs to drop. So yeah, just go into Evo and do that. You can always go in. So let's say you're managing like life and health on the side and you, um, or you have, you know, your TWFG business, but then you have your own private one on the side. You can enter policies manually and just not sync them into Evo. 
um, or if you need to update something, you do you have this option. Yeah, so it goes to the main office instead of our branch. Yeah, so then you'll create that shell so then it dumps into your branch instead of the main office. And you can do that in Evo. We have shared agent, yeah. Did that answer y'all's question? You guys are correct. I would just go to Evo for those specific cases. Okay, perfect. All right. Um, so we've created an, a contact and we've shown it in Evo now. Um, Sachin, if we can add a file and a note and then just show how that transfers into, oh, and a doc. Yeah, we can do that right now. See how it transfers into Evo. So we have this file option. Uh, I'll, I'll do one of them. Let's start with this one. And there you have an option of sync with Evo. So you just need to give us you can attach to a policy also, but so what he's showing you in this screen is you can either sync a file to the contact or you can sync a file to an exact policy. And then once it's uploaded into Insured Mine, if you have auto sync on, then it will automatically transfer into Evo. If you have manual sync on, then you will manually sync it and then you can identify what type of file it is. So where it has activity type, you're able to select, you know, what it is. So we have received it here. So we can just directly download it. Um, so right here, hang on, Sachin, let's pause here for a second. So on this screen, when you, when they add a diary, it's going to show the status as open. You guys see that it's an open status. So you can usually what happens when you get to the end of your sales process, you're double checking everything. You can go in and close all of that out. Um, closing it just locks it. Um, you can always add more notes to it once it's inside of Insured Mine and everything. Now, if you attach a file inside of Evo, so let's say the carrier downloads the deck page and the ID cards and all of that into Evo, that will not transfer into Insured Mine. And that's a security reason. Um, they don't want to just take everything and dump it into Insured Mine. Um, but if you go the other way, it'll send it back to Evo. So again, it's just helping you manage your processes. And it creates more visibility of your contacts and your accounts and what's going on with them. Yeah, you can even add a task. Let's see. There's a button to sync. Just a little bit slow or uh, don't uh, search yeah. So, yeah. Sure, so. yeah. So the task so is have... not. Uh, like, yeah, please go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can go. You can go. Yeah. So the task is the similar actions like other communications. So you can go ahead and create your task in Insured Mind for your respective customers. And then it will sync with your respective Evo branch. There you can see it. But the thing is that like, so whatever you are doing at this pace will be just applicable from insured mind to Evo and Evo to insured mind. Let's say you are updating some task details in Evo that will not be transferred. Like Kiara mentioned before, it is still under the development pace for the discussion. So that is not available. When you're transferring something, it can only sync from insured mind to Evo. That's it. Please continue, Sachin. This is a task, so I'll select one policy which which I created recently. So just add this one. This is a test environment. Maybe we are having some issue. 
Um, Damon, your question, yes. Uh, so if you have a rating system, you're just going to go directly to your rater. And when that prospect is created in Evo, the prospect will also be created inside of it. Yes, you'll just, it'll sync with insured mine. Then you create that deal card and then you can leave that customer in whatever, you know, the quote sent stage and then the automations will kick in. You know, once the customer says, yes, I'm ready, you take that deal card. And again, a deal card is a business deal you're working. You'll move it to issue policy. Once you move it to that stage, you can have an automation going out saying, you know, congrats on your new policy. Um, two days later, you can say, leave us a Google review. All of that can be automated. So all you did was move a card and the communication is sent out for you. And it documents inside of Evo. So we'll go over like a pipeline sales process. Um, good question, Damon. So uh, the pipeline, your sales process does not communicate with Evo. Um, and I'll explain that once we get to pipeline. But moving a deal card doesn't do anything to Evo. It's just management for yourself. It helps you know where your customers are. So typically, one person can only manage maybe 10 leads at a time. Because you forget where they are, you forget, you know, oh, this customer, I'm missing the driver's license. This particular customer, I'm waiting on closing documents. I'm waiting to hear back from the mortgage lender, whatever it may be. Um, insured Mind can help you manage more leads. So instead of one person managing 10, the system will help you manage 50 because you know exactly what's going on. All right, thank you, Sasha. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. So this is a test environment. So we are seeing certain issues with the passing. So let's go with the uh, notes part itself, such So that sure. you can go ahead and show that. Yeah. We have something for us to know, adding notes. We can add notes into policies. So we have it in pipelines too. So things. So, saving this. So we have an option. Normally it will sync automatically if you have kept it. So sync it manually. So we have the subject, you can change it. You can attach a policy to it. Yeah, almost okay. every activity which means like notes email sms task files everything is almost similar you will have seeing uh, like the same options because it is same as diary in evo so you will be seeing the similar options and based on that respective feature like it's a note or something so you will have the additional data points according to it so now you can see the type as no for the first one and that it got synced from insured mine and whatever that we have added from there, it will be available. And one more question was asked by uh, one more person from this chat. So how we can mark that status as closed, but currently it is not available. So we are uh, keeping that diary syncing always on open status. If you would like to do that, you can do that one from Evo end at this part. If we have that capability, so we will be doing it uh, with insurement also. So currently it is not available. having some questions um okay yeah this is uh, a good thing like closing the task from e uh insured mind to evo so we'll definitely take this as a request and we can work on it so i will have to discuss with the team and we can do this proceeded accordingly yeah this is a requirement um, like so if you put a prospect inside of Evo, will it sync automatically to a process? Um, yes, Roger. Once you create that deal card on the pipeline, it'll sync to a process. Um, we will take the notes back, Deborah, Damon. We'll take the notes back to Catherine and Mark um, and have them provide more clarity on 
what are the requirements of EVO to TWFG? Um, Roger, Jay just answered that. So they'll work with, um, so the first iteration of the integration was just getting task and files to go back and forth. The second part they'll work on, um, like you said, they'll go back to the team and say, closing it out. So if I close it in insured mind, then we can close it inside of Evo. Roger, even more than we do now. Um, I don't know, Damon. When I log in, I copy to paste it. Okay, that's the login. You have to create the deal card yourself. Um, Nick, your Evo is not working, meaning in insured mind, you're not seeing your Evo data. So that you won't see until the end of the week. Um, the Evo still has to release some information to insured mind to continue the sync. Okay, I think that's all the questions so far. Um, I think we're good on Evo integration. Again, we'll have another meeting. Once the sync is turned on and you guys are able to sign in and see all your data, um, you can go and create a test account and then kind of go back and forth to get more comfortable with what that integration looks like. Um, are there any additional questions for Sachin and Jay? on the integration before they head off? Mm, not major, Kera. So if any other questions are there, so we are open to answer all those. Like maybe we can draft it in an email and then we can respond it in another meeting also if they are coming up with the newer questions, okay? Okay, sounds good. Yeah, so if you guys have questions on Evo integration, we'll send that over to them in next training or some mass email that we'll send out yeah. to you all guys to answer. All right. Perfect. All right. Thank you guys for joining. Thank you, Kira. Thank you, Sachin. Thank you all. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. Okay. Um, so now um, you guys had a, quite a few questions on setup items. So I'm going to go ahead and reshare my screen and show you how to add the profile. Okay. So when you sign in and you're on your get started page, step seven is where you can add your users. So if you're missing your producers um, or you're missing your CSRs, you can add them in here. So you'll just select add agent. What is their role at your agency? What is their full name and their login email? The login email is their TWFG email, okay? then you'll decide whether they should get access to all agency data. If you want them to have access to only their individual data, don't check that box. Um, once an agent is added, Insured Mind gets an alert that an agent has been added. And um, then probably your customer success person will reach out because we need to tie their Evo login to the Insured Mind login so their contacts can transfer. So that's how you can add those agents. Um, there was another question on setup. So if you click your profile picture and then select your profile picture again, up at the top here, this is where you can change your password. So mom's right sending you guys a password. You can copy paste it here and then you can change it to what you'd like. To get to this page again, I clicked the profile picture and then you'll select the profile picture again on the inside. Okay. Um, down here, this is our integrations page. Um, so I'm in settings. So profile picture settings. This is where your email is connected. You're doing this in the get started page already. Then this second row here, these are all of the phone systems that we integrate with. Um, so Ring Central, Twilio, or Lightspeed Voice. Um, TWFG has given all of you a Twilio phone. Um, that should already be connected with your Evo. So we are in the process of connecting your agency phone with your accounts. Now, if you have your own Ring Central phone system that you want to connect, you can do that as well. You'll just click connect and then follow the process. It'll send you to your Ring Central login. Once you've connected phone system, 
that's when the text message and phone calls can be attached inside of your contact. Uh, phone calls can be recorded um, and they are auto scripted out. We do have some additional integrations down below. So thanks.io is a postcard. It's an automated postcard system. So um, a sample workflow is you move the deal card to issue policy. This customer has said yes. An email goes out to them that says, congrats on your new policy. And then you set an automation that sends them a welcome to our agency postcard that goes out a week later. Okay. Um, we do have a promo code for them if you want to test it out. So just let us know and we can send you that promo. You get, um, oh, do we have a promo code? Yes, I think we do. So just let us know. Zapier is a lead. Uh, it's a connector. Think of it like a liaison between different platforms. So let's say you have a Facebook page and you want to push all Facebook messages or all leads that you're getting to Insured Mine. Um, you can do that through Zapier. So this will help you if you have any lead management system that you're using or um, lead platform, you can push those leads into Insured Mine, which then would push those prospects into Evo. Slide Broadcast is a voicemail drop system. Um, Damon Cook, who is the renewal star of Insured Mine at T uh, from TWFG, he uses voicemail drops when um, the renewal policy, the premium increases above a certain percentage. So he automated, I add a label, uh, premium went up, a voicemail is dropped on their phone that says, hey, your policy premium has gone up. Please give me a call. We need to relook at your policy. That can all be automated. Um, we have Google review. So um, again, you have your process as soon as you mark the deal card one. Three days later, it sends them a Google review link. Okay. Uh, Damon, so we can use texting and IM that do not use texting platform with an Evo. Yes, Damon, the phone systems that we connect with, though, are Ring Central. You can get your own. So you get a free text phone number through Twilio, or you can use Lightspeed. Uh, do we port our phones to Twilio? Uh, they are in the process of doing that for you. Can we cancel our current phone subscribers? Um, you can cancel your current phone subscribers. So within a contact itself, I'm jumping all over the place a little bit, but um, Earl, when you have one of your contacts, it says opt out, opt in. So if you have that current list, we can just update your contacts with their opt in, opt out options. So you can have, you know, like a text campaign going out um, or maybe in your renewal process, you send text messages saying your policy is up for renewal. If they've opted out, they won't receive it. So you can preset the sequence, but if they are opted out of that text message, they won't receive the text. They'll only receive maybe the emails if you've set it up that way. Um, Appendra, these are just options. You do not, you're not required to have anything uh, like the phone system. So if you still want your phone, you can keep your phone. If you want to cancel your phone provider, um, you'll have to work with your phone provider for that. But Insured Mine, we just work with those three phone systems that you can connect. You do get a free Twilio phone with Insured Mine. So there's that. Correct. Damon, you'll need a phone provider to send text campaigns. Okay. Yes, and we are reviewing this with Mark and Catherine. So all the ones that do not have Ring Central or Julia, we are going to work with Catherine and Mark to see if we can provide you a phone number for text and callings. Perfect. Okay. Um, we are going to take a 15 minute break. And then once we come back, we'll jump into pipeline. Um, pipeline will probably take an hour to uh, maybe not an hour, maybe 30 minutes to go over. Then we'll probably have another five minutes of questions. Then we'll go over the renewal process and we should wrap up um, probably around 2.15 max. 
So we might end a little bit earlier than what we um, said, but we'll take a 15 minute break. If you guys have any additional questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. Um, and we'll come back here at um, 1235. Okay, so what a pipeline is. So uh, pipeline manager is our uh, biggest feature. Um, and it is a process. So it can help you manage your new business process. It can help you manage your renewal process. And on that pipeline, you will have stages and each stage represents um, a portion or uh, where a customer is in your process. So an example that I'm showing up here, you can have multiple types of pipelines, uh, different pipelines per line of business or insurance type. And then in your, for example, that we have up your commercial new business process, you have stages. And inside of each stage, you'll have actions that are occurring. So for example, if I have a customer that is in my um, application signature stage in my process, I can then automate adding a checklist to the deal card and the checklist can help you keep track or help your CSRs or producers keep track of what is needed in order to close out that policy or to continue the binding process of that policy. Different examples of automations. So what are automations? Uh-oh. I wonder if you guys were able to hear that sound online. Um, so what are automations? Automations are steps or actions that are occurring in each stage of your process. So here is a sequence of actions that can occur. So as soon as I take a deal card and a deal card is a business deal that you're working, I take that business deal and I move it to a prospect qualification stage. An email and a text message is immediately sent out. The text message would be the opt-in. So you're opting in to receive text messages. If the customer says, no, I don't want to receive text messages, they're automatically removed from receiving text communications from you moving forward. Um, an email goes out to them saying, you know, welcome to our agency. Thanks for contacting us. Um, so it can be a very branded email that is specific to your branch. Okay. If the deal card is still sitting in that stage for a day, another email can be sent to them and a task is assigned to the producer to call that customer. So what happens is you have this process that is pre-built and all you do is you look at your task list for the day and you just work down your task list. So on that task list, it's gonna tell you, you need to call this particular customer because they've been sitting in your prospect qualification stage for two days. Um, three days later, another task is assigned to you. So again, the benefit is it can help you manage more prospects and more leads because you don't always have to remember where they are and what was the last thing you talked to them about and all of that. The system will help you keep track of them. Switch screens. I'm going to show you what it looks like inside of insured money. So here you have a pipeline and on this pipeline, you can see these deal cards. These deal cards will move one stage to the next, okay? You can have as many pipelines as you'd like. So right here, we're looking at Gordy's branch in Houston. These are the different stages that they have or the different pipelines that they have. And each pipeline has a different number or a different um, title of stages. So here is an example of his commercial lines pipeline. A commercial renewal pipeline. On here, he has deal cards. These deal cards are automatically created for renewals and it has the premium amounts in here and they're automatically created 120 days prior to the policy expiring and it's counting down. He has the personal lines new business pipeline and then on that personal lines new business pipeline, he's got some business deals that he's working. Inside of those business deals, he has how much money in premium that he's quoting them. If I open up a deal card, here it's going to tell me what line of business they were interested in, how much for each line of business. So you've quoted this person personal auto for $350, and the homeowner's policy, you maybe quoted them $1,200. Okay. You can have multiple lines of business inside of one deal card, like we're seeing here. 
And let's say you want to give the customer multiple quotes. So um, for this personal auto policy with this particular carrier, and your carriers will port over from Evo, so you don't have to manually add in those carriers. All the carriers you currently work with will be in the drop-down option. So personal auto from this carrier was this amount of money. Personal auto from another carrier was this amount of money. Okay, so it's just a way to keep track of all the business deals you're working. Inside of the deal card, any notes that you have about that contact, you can add it inside. Any files. So let's say you want to download a PDF of the quote that you generated. You can drag and drop it. They send you, they text you a picture of their driver's license. You can drag and drop it inside of the deal card. All of that will transfer into Evo. Um, any email communication that you've sent back and forth, that contact will uh, will display inside of the deal card. So any email about that deal will be here. Okay. So these are deal cards. And again, these deal cards will move from one stage to the other. And inside each stage, you have a list of things that are occurring. To create, um, all of your accounts are gonna come with um, preset pipelines. So all of you will receive these pipelines that you're seeing here. And on each one of those pipelines, it already has the stages. You can create your own pipeline if you'd like or you can edit the existing pipeline by clicking the pencil. If you sign in and you do not see these buttons, there's two different views of insured mine. There's agent view and there's admin view. If you are the branch owner or you are the manager or admin of the accounts at your agency, you'll need to toggle your view to admin view. That will unlock all the settings in the platform. So as a branch owner, you design the process that your CSRs or your producers or account managers will follow. So all they do is they go to pipeline, they work their deals, and the system is telling them, hey, today you need to do this particular task because as the agency owner, you want to create consistency across your branch. Insured Mind helps you create that consistency by automating a process. Any questions so far on what pipelines are, what deal cards are, and the benefits of having them? Okay, we'll go over how they're created. I just wanted to give you a high level overview of what it is. Um, Damon, we'll go over deal card creation and that will answer your question. Are these emails and text message pre-processed, pre-created in IAM, or do I get to create them? Both, Darren. You can, so we'll give you some templates. You can edit the template or you can create your own. Um, TWFG, the marketing team, will also create some content for you as well. When a client opts out of text messaging, you know, it might really reflect an Evo. Yes, it will, Damon. It will reflect inside Evo. Okay, so let's go over what happens. How do I work a deal? So let's say a customer calls in and they say they want a policy, okay? Or they're interested in an auto policy. So you'll go to pipeline, you'll select add deal, okay? You'll decide whether it's personal or commercial. There's also benefits, life and health. But for this example, we'll use personal. I'm gonna start typing in the contact's name. It's searching Evo and insured mine to see whether that contact exists. If it does, you're able to select the existing contact. Okay, so let's say uh, we have Bryson and Kiara Abney. Let's say they are an existing customer that has an auto policy with you, but they're now interested in homeowners. Okay, so you can click the existing client. If it's a brand new customer, so let's say we'll add some numbers at the end. You'll select create new. By clicking create new, it's now creating a brand new prospect inside of insured mine. If you have auto sync on, it's also creating a brand new prospect inside of Evo.
Okay. Um, I'm going to click myself because I've already done this. So you'll fill out the email, the phone number of the customer, all this information. You'll select which pipeline and in which stage that deal card should go in. So sometimes the sales process goes really quickly, especially for some of the personal P&C. So creating a deal card in the gather info stage doesn't make sense because you have them on the phone. You've collected the information and you've told them the quote in one sitting. So you don't have to create the deal card in the stage order. You can drop the deal card where that customer is in your process. So if you did the rating flow, you went to your rater, you created that contact through the rater, then you'll come to insured mine. The contact will already exist because you entered the data into the rater, it transferred into Evo. And then when you come to insured mine, you're just gonna type that contact's name and you're gonna select their name. They've already, they already exist. Okay. You'll say it goes in this stage. The deal category, so this is the line of business. All this information is automatically populated in from Evo. So you do not have to create your lines of business. They're already there. Deal health is whether it's hot, cold. This is your own metric. There's no standard. So according to your branch, what is a hot deal? What is a cold deal? Okay. Lead source is how did they hear about you? So for this example, we said it was a call-in. So I'll select call-in. Maybe you work with a mortgage lender and um, at that mortgage lending, you can say this is a partner or you can say you can type in a specific person's name or you can say these are referrals. And then under referrals, you have the individual customers that are referring you. The benefit of this is you can see where all of your deals are coming from. Where is the lead source? If you notice out of all of your new business, 50% of them are coming from Facebook. That means you should probably invest in Facebook ads. If you see 20% of your deals are coming from carrier partnerships, then maybe you want to work more with those carrier partnerships to get more leads. So that's the benefit of collecting lead source. How did they hear about you? You'll enter in the expected closing date. So this is the predicted expiration date of the policy or effective date of the policy they're gonna get with you. So you'll plug that in here and then you'll select save. So here's that deal card I just created. And again, that deal card will move from one stage to the next. Um, Damon, you won't add lead source labels, but you'll add the lead source. Um, and I think that just might be a um, semantics thing because labels inside of insured mine is something different. Um, but when you're creating those deal cards, you're telling the system it's coming, you have drop down options of where they're coming from. So here, I'll show you these. So here are the different lead sources. When you're setting up your account, you're able to say what lead source it is. So for example, um, here's referrals. Um, under referrals, I can add a contact's name that is a referral. So then when you're creating that deal card, you're saying it's a referral from this particular person. Okay. All right. Once you create that deal card, you now can have automation set in place. So I'm going to show you some samples. The ones that we give you, the sample templates, it's already a full built out workflow in each one of the stages. They are deactivated, so nothing is going out, nothing is being triggered until you decide to activate it, right? So you can go through, review what's already been set up, and then you can edit by clicking the pencil. So maybe you don't want this email to go out. Maybe you want it to be a little bit more branded, like the one that I showed you all. You can create that template, and then you can add it in to each stage, and you can time it out. Okay, I'll show you the commercial lines pipeline and that email. So here you can have your logo, you can have your Facebook links that'll take you to the Facebook page. Okay, you can have the opt-in text message. 
also tell them to reply stop to unsubscribe. So then if they receive a text message moving forward, they won't receive it, okay? In this particular stage, they have automations built out for two weeks. And at the two week mark, the deal card is automatically closed out because the contact did not respond and it was not moved, okay? So two weeks of communication preset and all you did was create the deal card in that stage. And then you're just following your task list because all this is automatically being sent out for you. If you move the deal card to the policy issuance, again, you can have another automation. So here you can say your policy is pending. Congrats on your new policy. In the next few days, you're gonna get some documents that we need for signature. Look out for those. If they have any questions, contact you, okay? These are all preset. So you will decide your process and uh, you'll build the automations associated with your process. The different automation options that you have, okay? So when I selected add automation up at the top here, let me back up right here. So you'll select your stage. So maybe in the proposed stage, I wanna add an automation. And up at the top here, these are the different automation options. Again, automations are things, it's a process or actions that are occurring in your sales process. Emails and text messages, those are to the customer. So if you wanna send an email automatically or send a text message automatically. And then you have these other options. These are an internal process, okay? So as soon as I move the deal card to policy, uh, issue policy, I wanna dump a checklist into that deal card. And it's all the items I need to collect. That does not go to the customer. It's just internal for you to help manage what's happening with that deal. You can get very specific with automations. So you can automate them by stage or you can automate by category, by line of business. So if I create a deal card for an auto policy, um, then I can drop in an auto policy checklist. If I do a homeowner's policy, I can add a homeowner's checklist to the deal card. When you are sending emails to customers, so like an automation email, on the far right, we have all of these tags. These tags are gonna pull data points specific to the customer. So I can say, hi, and then I wanna click contact first name. And it's gonna drop in the first name of that customer where you've created that deal card, okay? Does that make sense to everybody so far? Any questions about automations? I know there's a little bit more specifics, but I just wanna make sure everyone knows what automations are and how they help build a workflow from beginning, from prospect, all the way to the point of issuing the policy. You can build whatever sequence you would like. We do give you these sample pipelines to guide you in that process. You also will have access after you've completed the certification course to meet with a trainer and you can tell the trainer, this is what I wanna accomplish and they will help build that process for you. Great question, Damon. Yes, let me show you that. So Damon's question was, can automations be paused? Yes, I'm gonna move my deal card so you guys can see. You can move deal cards from one pipeline to the next. That's what I'm doing. Okay. So here's that deal card. Every time you take a deal card and you drag it to a stage, the automation screen pops open. You can disable all of them, meaning you don't want it to go out. So maybe the customer says, I'm going to be out of town for the next two weeks. Don't contact me for two weeks. You can turn them all off or you can toggle them individually. You can also click to review them. So you have control over the automations. It's not like they're sent and you have no control over anything. You can control the process. Automations are just there to be a guide and to create consistency. 
the better and more consistent you are, the better your data. The better your data, the better your reports, the more you can analyze that data to boost your sales and boost your agencies, you know, whatever your goals might be. So whether it's retention, the way you get better retention is by having a clear process um, to get data to analyze what's happening with your retentions. Where are the gaps? Okay. All automations are time-based, okay? We cannot control how a customer responds, okay? A system cannot read a customer's brain, but we can control time. So all automations are triggered off of time. So when you're looking at these sequences, it's all one day later, two days later. So you're pre-scheduling something. And if you're pre-scheduling it, that means it cannot be edited once it's been pre-scheduled. But again, you have control over them. So you can toggle them on and off when you take the deal card and you move it. You can toggle individual ones on and off, okay? Let's say you apply all of them on accident, or let's say a customer responds back and you need to turn off the sequence. Within the deal card itself, so to get there, I clicked the customer's name. And then under automation, here it's gonna show you all those preset automations that have been sent out or scheduled to send. You can click stop and it'll turn off all those automations. Okay. You have control over the process. It's just there to help you speed up the time it takes to close a deal. Normally, you'd have to go to your email. You'd have to copy a prior email or you have a template. Then you'd paste it in there. Then you'd click send. That probably takes you two minutes to complete. Why don't I save you two minutes and do it for you automatically? That's what Insured Mind can do for you. I see some questions, I'll get to those. Um, I'm gonna start at the beginning, but if you guys have them, go ahead and drop them in. Um, I send an email to the client. Roger, reading yours. Great question. So if you are plugging in, so right here when you have the quote, the first quote that you plug in, if you select more options, you can type in the policy number. Okay. You can type in the policy number, you can select the carrier, tell them how much the premium is. And in the automation on the tags, you have quote tags available. You can quote the policy number. You can quote how much in premium that is. You can quote the line of business and the carrier. So all that information you're plugging inside of the deal card you can automate sending out. So you can say, hey, following up on the quote I sent you five days ago, because everything is time-based, so you're gonna say five. With this particular carrier, this particular coverage with this amount of money. Okay. If the automation is ready set up, or send it, it's not possible to first edit the first automation, but the seconds or the following automations you can edit. So what you have to do, let's say that this automation that is the text immediate, it's already sent it, but the following email that is going to be sent it tomorrow, you can come here and edit the email. So by tomorrow, this email is going to be updated. If a task is already automated uh, today, but uh, as you say, the customer is going to be out two weeks, you can go to your task list and update the, let's not show in the task. I'm going to create a new one. Okay, it's not here, but
so this task is pending pending so if you want to edit the task what you have to do is click in edit and update the date so let's say that it's going to be 27 when you are going to have the meeting with your client or connect with them so you are going to be able to edit and add notes comments or files in the task You have to do it manually, Roger. So when a new auto policy is writing with a progressive, you have to send uh, manually the email. It's not possible to fill or to send an automation with the user ID or the password if it's some data that it's specifically. You have to do it manually. How? Okay, so let me log out from this account. Okay, sorry about that. Monser, are you answering this? Yeah, so I'm showing Roger how to create a new email because he wants to send a new email with the password and the the ID for a new auto policy or progressive, but it's not possible to create an automation for this. He has to create it manually. Create the automation for? The email. Because as, as he asked, um, we cannot trigger an automation for something specifically like a new password or a new user ID. Oh, no, 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 no. So we can't mm -hmm. um, trigger automated emails. Now, what most people will do is they'll create a template. And then in that template, they will. And let me share my screen. So while you're inside of the deal card, you can click email. And then here you have a template. So you'll select your template that you would have. And then in there, you would just type in, you know, here's your number, here's this and this, and then you click send. So even just by having a template available, it will save you time. Yeah, Roger, it, yeah, perfect. Okay. Um, any additional questions on automations? No? Okay. I'm going to go back to this presentation. All right. So um, here are the automation options again. Emails and text messages are two customers. The rest are internal processes. So assigning a task to someone, um, adding a checklist. Some people have one person at their agency that's responsible for quoting. So as soon as you take the deal card and you move it to the quote ready stage or ready to quote stage, you can assign the deal card to that one person who does all the quoting. That can be an automation. If they are assigned a deal card, they get an email notification saying, hey, um, you've been assigned a deal card. They can click that email and it'll take them to the deal card. And inside of that deal card, you've collected all the quote information. Okay. Um, you have tags on the far right. The tags will pull data points specific to the customer. Okay. Um, the more tags that you have, the more personalized the email will be, which means it's less likely to get flagged as spam. 
If you're just sending mass emails out without something relevant to the customer, the email providers are smart enough now to um, filter through what they think is spam and what it is not. So if I pull data points specific to, it has your first name, it has your last name, it has, you know, hey, um, you referred to us by, and then you drop in the tag lead source, because when you're creating that deal card, you're saying you were referred to me by Damon, right? So because you have that specific information, it will automatically push to the top of their inbox. Okay, automations explained a little bit more in depth. Automations are triggered on time only. We cannot control how a customer responds. So when you set them up, think about what is the ideal workflow. When a customer is in a certain stage in your pipeline, how many times do you want to reach out to them? What should the agent do after five days? After 30 days, what should happen? Automations are a one-time trigger. An automation is pre-setting something to go off. It's kind of like setting an alarm. Once you've turned on your alarm, it's going to go off. If you want the alarm to not go off, you have to turn off the alarm. <laughs> Same thing is happening with automations. You have to turn them off in order for it to not go off. And you can do that from doing it inside of the deal card. You can trigger automations by stage. So moving a deal card from quoted to issue policy. You can do it by marking a deal card won and lost. You can do it by labels, which we'll look at when we look at the renewal process, or you can do it by category. So by line of business, these are all different ways to automate something. So if you have, um, I don't know, a auto policy with this particular carrier that you have to have certain documents for that carrier, create a checklist. Then you add a label that triggers that checklist to be added. And then again, the automation options, <clears throat> emails, text message, checklist, task. Um, those are all the different automation ways. Um, in your um, packet, in your TWFG training manual, um, and Montserrat will also drop the link in the chat. We've given you this pipeline manager organization chart. It can just help you Think through the process that you want to create, okay? You are already doing this. It's just how do I get the actions I'm performing in a system, in a computer platform? And this sheet will help you build that flow. So as soon as at the top, you just write the stage in your personal lines process. What email do you send to the customers? Do you send any text messages? What are those text messages? Is there a task you perform? And are there checklist items in that stage? So just in one day, you can do this. So just think through one deal that you're working and what is the process that you follow? S draft it out on this chart. And then when you go to your training, your one-on-one -on -one training, you can just pull up the chart and say, this is what I do, let's build this. Okay. There's also some questions up at the top to help you think through what's happening in each stage. Any questions for me so far? Okay. Um, in the chat, Monzer dropped that organization chart. All right, we've already had our break. All right, renewal process. Um, Monzer, is Damon on this call? No, he's not. He's going to be on Thursday. Okay. So the renewal process, it's just another pipeline that you can have. Most people will separate um, the commercial lines renewal process versus their personal lines renewal process. And we'll talk about why in a second. But because InsuredMind integrates with Evo and it has the policy data, you can tell the system to automatically reach out to your customers a certain number of days before their policy expires and all of it can be automated. 
Okay. Uh, this is what it will look like. So you'll tell the system for personal lines, I want you to auto create these deal cards 45 days prior to the policy expiring. Inside of those deal cards, you have the premium amount. It is the old premium, unless the future policy premium has already downloaded. If it has, it will have the new premium amount inside of the deal card. Okay. And one of the automation options, again, we can build automations off of time. So you can create essentially a countdown to renewal pipeline because you're going to tell the system 45 days, create it. Then in 15 days, automatically move it to this stage. Then another 15 days later, automatically move it to this stage. And in each one of those stages, you can have text messages and emails going out saying, hey, your policy is going to renew in 30 days. Hey, you have 15 days left of your current policy. Now's a good time to look at additional coverages or bundle to save or whatever marketing message you'd like to send out a certain number of days prior to their policy expiring, okay? The way you would set this up from pipeline, you'd click the big three dots in the far right and you'll select pipeline settings. In this pipeline settings page, you'll select the renewal pipeline. And this is where you tell the system when to create those deal cards and in what, what pipeline and in what stage to create it. So the very first thing we went over when we were looking at pipeline is how do you create them or how do you edit them, okay? You're already given these pipelines again. You can change the names of the stages, whatever you'd like. Once you've created those pipelines, you can say for personal policies, I want you to create them on this particular pipeline in this particular stage. Then you're gonna say how many days prior to the policy expiring. On average, what we see for personal lines, people will typically set it for 60 days. For commercial lines, they'll set it to be 120 days. If there's one person at your branch that handles renewals, you can automatically create those deal cards under that one person. Or if you're like Gordy's branch, you have multiple people who handle them and you need the deal card to be created under whoever manages that policy. You can tell the system to do that as well. Okay. Um, at the very bottom, you'll wanna toggle this one on. So you wanna create a single renewal deal card per contact. So let's say you have a, um, a family that has five policies expiring on the same day. You only wanna create one deal card for that family. So this is what you're telling the system, create one deal card per contact and put all of those policies inside of one. Once you've told the system how to create the deal card, those deal cards will land on that pipeline in that stage, okay? So, and this is what it will look like. On the deal card, you see these yellow dates. The yellow date is the um, expiration date of the policy. And it also tells you what line of business is expiring, okay? As soon as that deal card is created, you can automatically trigger emails out to the customer. This is the renewal pipeline. Again, you can set up a countdown to renewal essentially what you'll do here. Um, you'll set up the, you'll tell the system when to create those deal cards. You'll do that in pipeline setting, okay? Um, Damon Cook, so he is the TWFG star. Um, he uh, kind of built Insured Mind's best practice for renewals. Um, we have a full um, webinar. Uh, he's going to meet with us on Thursday to explain exactly what he's doing in his process, um, but we have a recording of him explaining it. So you guys are able to watch how he has reduced three hours of work time. He actually measured this using Insured Mind for managing his renewal process. How he does this is he uses labels. So he has the deal cards automatically populating into um, the stage he triggers an email that just says, you know, your policy is up for renewal. Don't worry about it right now. I'm going to take a look at it. And then he waits a few days because the carriers don't download that update until a certain number of days prior. 
He then gets a notification that, hey, this policy is 31 days out or 30 days out. He goes to insured mine. He looks at the premium difference. He adds a label based upon that difference. So whether the rate stayed the same, whether the rate went down or whether the rate went up. By adding that label, he has label automations. And on those label automations, he drops a voicemail telling them what happened. So your uh, rate went up a little bit, but I still think it's best for you to stay with your current carrier. An hour later, uh, he says, I'll send you an email with more information. An hour later, an email is automatically sent out. He waits 15 days for the customer to respond. If the customer does not respond, he sends a text message letting them know like, hey, this is what's going on. You know, do you want to make any changes? Then he assigns a task to himself. Okay, two days later, saying, This is my final attempt. He gives them a call. He says, Hey, is everything okay? If not, it's automatically going to renew. All of this is automated. Most of the time, he doesn't get to this task because the customers have responded during this time period. They've got about 15 days before their policy automatically renews. So this is how he set up his renewal pipeline, and it ended up saving him three hours. Um, on Thursday, when we have our TWFG training, um, he will be on and he will show exactly how he set it up and what he has done um, in more details. But this is a renewal sample. Um, your renewal pipeline that we've dropped in your account is built off of this. So when you're looking at it, it's going to look very similar to what he has set up. Um, we're not going to go over marketing. We'll go over marketing in January. Um, the last piece I want to show you all are the reporting inside of Insured Mind. So there's two different areas of reports inside of Insured Mind. You have your dashboard, which we've gone over already. In the dashboard, the agency dashboard is Evo Data. The sales dashboard is new business. Anything that you were doing on pipeline, taking deal cards, moving them, marking them one and lost, all that is populated on the sales dashboard. We have our reporting module. In the reports module, you'll see your entire book of business. You can group it by agents, by carrier, or by the line of business, which is category inside of Insured Mine. It'll show you how many policies, how much money in premium, how many contacts are associated with that line of business, and what is the average premium amount per policy. So it'll show you all of these metrics. You can click any segment of the data. So let's say I want to look deeper into the homeowner's policies. Okay, It'll pre-populate information, and then you can add more filters. So I want to filter by this particular carrier. I want to filter by those that live in a particular city. Um, I want to filter how many have policies expiring in the next 30 days. So you can generate reports by that. Also the group by. You can look at your performance at your agency. You guys won't be able to see this for Gordy's branch, but here it'll show you how many accounts you've increased, how many you've decreased, and it is um, live data. So it adjusts with your book of business because we have immediate sync with Evo. So if you cancel a policy today, if you come to this section under performance, it'll show you a, a red down arrow because you've lost um, an account. You can look at activities. Activities are all of the um, items that are happening inside of your pipeline, inside of your deal cards. So how many notes did you add? How many files have you added? This is great for CSRs if you're tracking activities. Some of the larger agencies have um, virtual assistants um, or they'll have assistants that are working you know, in a different area. And so they wanna be able to keep track of what they are doing. This is how they do it. If you just want to run a report on all the different opportunities or renewals that you have, that's going to be under the opportunities module. It'll show you what policies you have that are up for renewal in the next 30 days. Again, you can group it by agent. You can group it by the carrier. Um, <clears throat> this is good if, let's say, 
uh, one of your carriers goes bankrupt or they go out of business and you need to reach out to all of those customers 30 days prior, this is a good place to pull that report. You can see how many customers have um, X dates approaching. You can see where your cross-sell opportunities, okay? So Casey Myers has 228 cross-sell opportunities. That means his 228 of his customers only have um, one or more one line of business that he can cross sell or upsell to. Okay. So the opportunities tab is a good place to see where you can grow your business, um, where you can run reports on approaching business. The reporting section is where you actually can generate reports to look at your data. The dashboard here. Agency dashboard shows you all of your Evo data. This is a good place to double check your sync. And then you have the sales dashboard, which is your pipeline new business data. Your activities dashboard is where you can manage your everyday tasks. And then your marketing dashboard is where you can see what marketing campaigns you have set to trigger. Okay. And Shared Mind can do a lot of things. I say make a list of all of the items you want to accomplish. So at your branch or as an agent, what do you want to do at your agency? Have some goals for your branch. Then tell them to your CSM, which would be Mons Rider Victoria. Tell them this is what I want to accomplish. I want to decrease the amount of time I'm spending on my renewals. By having that goal, we build your process inside of Insured Mind to align with your goal. And then all the data starts working together. Same thing for sales. If you want to, <clears throat> excuse me, you want to increase the number of policies each one of your customers have, right? So if most of your customers only have auto policy, you could essentially double your business if they all get a homeowner's policy with you. Um, so that you want to actively market bundling coverage or getting multiple lines of business with you, a one-stop shop. So then we focus heavily on the marketing. And then we ask you, when do you want to do the, when do you want to cross sell and upsell to them? Is it during the renewal process? Is it during new business? So they'll ask you a bunch of dissecting questions and that helps us build your process. And Again, the goal is automation. So I want to automatically, I'm going to build it once and then I want it to automatically run and I don't want to have to think about it. And that's what Insured Mind can do. That is the biggest difference between Evo, your agency management system and Insured Mind, a CRM. Evo still is your policy management because it talks to the carriers. Insured Mind does not talk to Allstate, does not talk to travelers. Okay. All we do is we help you build and grow your business. Okay. Any questions? Yes, it does, Anna. You can automatically send birthday emails. Um, someone asked me that. I'll show you. This will cover more when we go over the marketing piece. But under engagement marketing, we have automations. You'll click create. I'm going to switch this to list view. These are all of the preset automations. So you plug in their date of birth when you create the contact. It automatically sends them happy birthday messages. You want to automatically send policy renewals, reminder emails. The system will read when their policy is expiring. You tell it how many days before do you want to send that email, and it automatically runs it. You set it up one time, and it continues to run. These are all of those preset automations. Let's say you're trying to dabble in life policies or health policies, Medicare. Um, the system, it reads happy birthdays, and then when they turn 64, you can do a countdown to Medicare. You can create that campaign one time and it automatically reads it. So these are all preset. I want to automatically get Google reviews every, you know, three months. I want to mass email all of my clients Google reviews. So again, create a list of what are your goals and then we help you achieve those goals and we try to find ways to automate it.
um, way you do not, I hope I said that right. You do not have to have ring central. Um, with uh, TWFG has purchased or TWFG gives each brand a Twilio phone number and at Insured Vine, we can connect that Twilio phone to, insure, to Insured Vine um, or use my 8X phone number. I don't know what your 8X phone number is, but if that 8X phone number goes through Ring Central or Twilio, we can connect it. If it is not a Ring Central or a Twilio or a Lightspeed phone, we cannot connect it to Insured Vine. So, like your office phone, we cannot connect it. Okay. I think that's it. Um, if you'd like to hear Damon Cook's presentation, Monserrat has dropped the webinar sign up link in the chat. Um, I'll redrop it. That one's going to be. Um, it starts at 11 and ends a little bit earlier than our time today. It's a shorter session because um, we're just going to focus on renewals. Well, renewals and forms. How, how Damon is using the forms for renewal and sales process. All right, guys. That's okay. it Thank for you, me. Tiara. Yes. <laughs> Lots of talking. You, if you guys have yes. any questions, please reach out to Monserrat. So her email is just monserrat at insuredmind.com. I'll drop it in the chat. <laughs> yeah, there you go. She dropped it too. Sure. Um, yeah. Feel free to email her, message chat support, say, I need to talk to Monserrat and they'll connect you. I need to talk to Kiara. They'll ping us and let us know that someone needs us. Yep. All right. Bye, guys. And don't forget to register for Damon Cook training. It's going to be good for all of you. Mm -hmm. He okay. had insured mine before TWFG purchased for all of you. So he knows right. it very well. And he can give you all the feedback and answer any questions on the process. The best practices. Yep. Yes. Uh, all sessions are recorded, Paul. Yes. So we'll probably upload them at some point but we want to aggregate them all together first. Yeah. All right. Bye guys. Thank you, Kiara. Thank you all.